This is NBC 10 News Today. Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. It is 6 a.m. here on NBC 10 Today. I'm Anna McAllister. And I'm Chelsea Jones. And that girl over there is Lexi Birmingham. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Our weather goddess, as you said the other day. Oh. <laughs> Perfectly put. Um, kind of a nice outside this morning, I would say. Yeah, but it's mm -hmm. not going to stay that way, right? No, definitely not. Uh, we are anticipating that next cold front to move in. Today, though, going to be a little bit of a preview of what we're going to be expecting for tomorrow. There's just going to be a few isolated showers later on this afternoon. In fact, we're still seeing some in southern Arkansas currently early this morning. And temperatures still going to be nice and warm in the 70s by the afternoon hours as well. Seeing a few of those clouds, and we're starting to see a little bit of light to our sky. Our sunrise may be getting underway. Currently, right now, we're sitting at 56 degrees with winds out of the southeast at 6 miles per hour. That is your forecast first. Last night, 10 of the top Democrats running for president gathered in Georgia for the fifth debate of the campaign season for a crowded field that's still growing. But this one was a bit different, much faster paced, and a wide range of issues were covered. Jay Gray has a wrap up from Atlanta. Ten candidates, two hours. The early discussion dominated. Well, first of all, we have a criminal living in the White House. By Wednesday's explosive testimony from Ambassador Gordon Sondland during impeachment proceedings. Sadly, we have a president who is not only a pathological liar, he is likely the most corrupt uh, president in the modern history of America. As the debate continues, the questions are rapid fire. That what was once called climate change is now a climate crisis. And diverse. You describe your campaign, including your plans for Medicare for All, as a political revolution. There are the debate staples, health care, education, and immigration, but the forum also branches out to include issues of inclusion and equality. While I do not have the experience of ever having been discriminated against because of the color of my skin, I do have the experience of sometimes feeling like a stranger in my own country. The front runners controlling much of the conversation while those at the end of the stage. When Donald Trump was elected, not even sworn in, buddied up to Steve Bannon. What Senator Harris is doing is unfortunately continuing to traffic in lies. Or looking to make an impact with less than 11 weeks now before the first in the nation Iowa caucus. It's over, President Trump says, after yesterday's testimony on the impeachment inquiry. But it's not. Two more witnesses face lawmakers today. It's the final day of public testimony, and it begins this morning with Fiona Hill. She was the top White House expert on Russia under National Security Advisor John Bolton. Hill is expected to share her concerns that um, her and her boss had on President Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, directing Ukraine policy. Also testifying today, diplomat David Holmes. He told lawmakers he overheard a phone call between President Trump and Gordon Sondland about investigations in Ukraine. Sondland testified yesterday that even though President said no, there was still quid pro quo pushing Ukraine to investigate the Bidens in exchange for foreign aid. Now, as the impeachment inquiry carries on in Washington, political science professors here want the community to understand the process and what it could mean for our country. NBC 10's Maya Hudgens attended a panel discussion at ULM where students say the more you know, the better off you are. Impeachment is a hot topic at the nation's capital. Many have expressed their opinions on whether President Donald Trump is guilty or innocent. I'm not sure how it's, it's going to progress, but I... We know that if it progresses to the Senate, he is very unlikely to be removed from office. Some political analysts worry that locals don't actually know what impeachment means. Primarily to give people enough information so that they feel confident that they understand it and that they can form their own conclusions. While two presidents have been impeached, neither were removed from office. But a common misconception is that impeachment means being removed from office. It does not. They completely equate impeachment with removal from office, and it's not at all. Impeachment just means that you've been accused officially of some sort of misdeed. The House is in charge of filing articles of impeachment. If they decide to vote, it will take half of the members present, so a 50% majority. If the articles of impeachment are passed, it will go to the Senate for an actual trial. Currently, the Senate is run by Republicans. One student believes the House will be hard-pressed to get a majority vote. It kind of helped unveil the whole process to me that it's probably going to be along party lines. Nothing's probably going to 
really come of it that's too significant. Though some say this process can be long and confusing, understanding impeachment and what it means is important. The people in our age group really tend to kind of support one party over the other, which is interesting because it's the prosecuting party in the impeachment inquiry. So it's kind of very important to know exactly what you're supporting. You know? As many students asked questions, the panelists added that President Trump's case is very different from impeachment cases in the past. They say the Constitution doesn't give exact laws on what to do, leaving it up to the House and the Senate. Well, an accused cop killer has been found guilty in the death of a Shreveport police officer. A jury has found Grover Canyon guilty of first-degree murder. Back in 2015, Cannon was charged in the shooting death of Officer Thomas Lavallee. The jury deliberated for just two hours before returning with the verdict. When the verdict was read, Cannon showed no reaction. He now faces the death penalty in the punishment phase of this trial, and it's set to get underway this morning. Some employees at Century Marketing Solutions, an affiliate of Century Link, will be laid off. Those layoffs could be effective as early as next week. As many as 30 employees will be losing their jobs. This company has been providing printing and mailing services over the last several years. But now they're leaning towards more digital tactics than print materials, so they've decided to consolidate effective on Friday. The company released a statement which reads in part, after careful consideration, we have decided to downsize the Century Marketing Solutions operations. We spoke with a contract employee who works for CMS off camera. He says employees were told earlier this week by their supervisors or managers that they were being let go by the company. He also says that he knew this was coming, but he didn't think that would happen this abruptly right around the holidays. The community is coming together to remember a little Claiborne Parish boy missing for more than a year. Rondreas Jr. Phillips was reported missing in April of 2018 when he was only four years old. Now today is his sixth birthday, his second away from home. The community is holding a balloon release to honor him and it's from 430 to 530 at Joe Michaels Park in Homer. The $10,000 reward money is still available to anyone with new information and you're encouraged to contact the Claiborne Parish Sheriff's Office. The former LSU student sentenced yesterday for the hazing death of Max Groover is back out on bond. This video shows former Phi Delta Theta member Matthew Nakeen leaving the jail after appearing in a Baton Rouge court. Yesterday morning, he paid a $10,000 bond and walked out of jail after his sentencing. Nakeen received five years for negligent homicide, but half of that time is suspended if he exhibits good behavior and participates in other jail programs. He could be, be, he could be behind bars less than a year. Groover's mother said the sentence is too lenient. And still to come, a lot of news headed your way. But first, here's Lexi with a look at your commute cast. And as you're getting ready to head out the door this morning, road conditions are looking just fine, even though some areas in southern Arkansas are seeing a little bit of those light showers.